While we're here, let's not forget the purpose of our arrival. Our goal is to take in the message, understand its meaning, and put it into a whole other language, and create as close as possible the same message. We must keep top of mind the context of the message, the cultural dynamics that lay in the, within the message, the tone, and the vibe of the person who's creating this message, and then relay it in the equivalent way into the source message, understanding not only meaning, but the reason why the message is being produce, produced, the goal, if you will. That will help us create message equivalency. Simple, right? I was actually recently reading a book um, that was made into a movie, and I had an epiphany. <clears throat> I was thinking that interpreting from English into ASL is like taking the book version and putting it into a movie. You get rid of all of the words and just create this visual picture. Before we land at our final destination, the land of interpreters, let me tell you, let me tell you, here they can... <clears throat> Here they speak a complex lexicon of it depends, and what does it mean? You'll never think about communication in the same way again. You will realize that English speakers talk in confusing limericks and meandering monologues that seem to have no meaning. But this will be a ceaseless task, that you will strive to find meaning in everything. But watch out, we're going to have our own biases attached to those messages that we receive and need to pass on. And in order to achieve message equivalency, we need to be cognizant of our internal biases. Some of these biases we won't even realize we have until we start reflecting on ourselves. Some of these stories have been told to us since we were ch children, and we believe them to be true. It is a continuing journey to understand our place here in the land of interpreters. Here in the land of interpreters, there are many philosophies of interpreting to take into consideration. One certain model of, inter of interpreting, the conduit, saw interpreters as machines passing on a message while, com while staying completely neutral. Interpreting is so much more than that. Unlike a machine, this person passing on the message has feelings, emotions, thought worlds, biases, and their own personal history. It's impossible to stay neutral when the interpreter has, is a complex and unique person. Of course, the goal is to stay as neutral as possible, but as newer models agree, the interpreter can only relay the message by becoming part of the message. One thing I've learned about being in this land is that in order to take assignments that fit for you, you must know yourself. If there's a situ situation that you think may go into negative that will negatively impact interpretation, maybe pass it on to another. The newer interpreting philosophy that many subscribe to now is the cognitive model. The idea that in order to construct meaning from a message, many aspects of the message are not being said or signed at all, but are in tone, body language, facial features, cultural context, and so on. With this model, we can construct a more meaning-based message as humans and not machines. We can move away from the idea of being perfect interpreters and accept that we are, will never be perfect, but we can just focus on developing our skills and be a lifelong learner. I'm happy to be coming into the land of interpreters now, as this seems to be much more embraced philosophy of interpreting. In the last two years, we have survived a pandemic, and self-care is emphasized more than ever. It has been four years since I decided to become an interpreter, and in that time, I've not only learned to be a well-rounded and ethical interpreter, I've also evolved so much as a human. Every step of the way felt like the right direction because it, everything truly aligned for me to be standing here today. I remember at VCC, our teacher Brenda Carmichael told us that we'd be doing a lot of reflecting. And she was not kidding. I reflected so much about my place in this society and my role in this community. 
I know I can use my natural abilities as an empathic person, as a sensitive person, and as a person with a very open heart to create good on this planet. I used to think being a sensitive person was a bad thing, but now I see it as a strength. I can use my abilities in my career to connect with people and help build relationships. Since I started this journey on my inter being a coming an interpreter, I healed my relationship with my father, and both my parents were able to support me in a way that they never had the capacity to when I was a kid. Before we make our final descent, I just want to thank a few of my supporters that have been along with me on this trip. First of all, I'm so grateful for my cohort. You inspired me with our kindness, support, and tenacity, and we got through a pandemic together. I'd like to also thank the deaf community who has been so incredibly gracious in supporting our class through a pandemic when there was no deafs to go, deaf events to go to. I would also like to thank my mentors along the way, especially my twin, Nicole Pedno. She supported me through, this, through day one. Someone said that I hit the jackpot when I got her as a twin, and I 100% agree. I also want to give a shout out to my roommate and dear friend Scott. From the day one that I got accepted to this program until now, he's been supporting me every step of the way, listening to me talk about school, cooking for me when I didn't have time because I was writing a 10 page paper, and giving me hugs when I cried when the pressure got too much. I also want to give thanks to my closest friends in this program, Jana and Ev. I couldn't have made it without you two. Your hugs, humor, emotional support, and encouragement were invaluable during these two years. We laughed together, cried together, celebrated together, and we also questioned why we were doing this together. <laughs> Lastly, I wanna thank our amazing teachers. I'm so grateful for Barb, Sarah, and Kirsten. Their kindness, support, and empathy has kept me going through the last two years. I've reached out to each one of them at some point, crying, <laughs> probably wanting encouragement that I'm not a terrible interpreter. I've texted them and called, and they've always been there to say just the right thing. And there have been our guardian angels and pushed us through to graduate, even through a global pandemic. So if I can just leave you with some advice before we disembark. First, to the sec now second years, if I can do this, you can do this. So just keep pushing. Also, make sure you exercise your mind, body, and spirit. Eat lots of plants. And don't forget to floss. <laughs> Passengers, we have arrived. Thank you.